My name's Irene on Instagram. I go by two splat out of me and welcome to my channel. We're gonna be talking about all things related to my new school program, Restorative Dental Hygiene. probably know from working as a dental hygienist, dental offices wouldn't be able to run efficiently without you. Everything from your skill, your rapport with your patients, and the way that you connect with everyone in the office makes you such a valuable asset. So after being a dental hygienist for 14 years, I realized I wanted to do just a little bit more. I've been running my practice for the last year during a very strange time to open a business and I finally decided that I was ready to go back to school to become a restorative dental hygienist. As you probably know from working as a dental hygienist, if you're watching this video and you are a hygienist, there are a lot of different things that you do in your practice, but there are some things that you just can't because of this thing called a scope of practice. Scope of practice is what you have to abide by, by our governing body, which is basically the license that you have to do specific procedures. Like I can't pull out of tooth because of my scope of practice. So when you go back to school to become a restorative dental hygienist, that scope of practice opens up a little bit further. In fact, these professionals often have a class of their own almost, a scope of practice of their own, and are able to do procedures that the regular dental hygienists are not able to because of that licensing body. I live in Canada. I'm in the province of Ontario, so everything we're gonna talk about is related to me and here in my office and my place and the things that I can do with my license here. Um, so if you're interested in finding out more about whether you can be a restorative dental hygienist, here are some great resources in the description below from the Canadian Dental Hygiene Association and the American Dental Hygiene Association that uh, will give you some links and places that you could be a restorative hygienist. So why did I choose to go back to school after 14 years of practicing dental hygiene and become a restorative dental hygienist? Real reason? I'm very artsy. I'm very creative. I think I like to make things. When I look at like my office, the things that give me the most excitement is things like, you know, if someone has a temporary, a filling that's popped out and I need to put a temporary in because, oh no, no one's here and I know how to do interim stabilization, that gets me excited. Or if someone needs sealants, that gets me excited. So as a restorative dental hygienist, I can do more of those things. I can do things like final impressions, creating provisionals, doing temporaries, bonding temporaries. I guess it's called cementation, not bonding, but cementation of temporaries. Indirect restorations, amalgams, except nobody really uses amalgam anymore. Does anybody even use amalgam anymore? I'm probably still gonna learn about using amalgam, but we don't do that here. These are all really cool skills that I'll be able to acquire, collect, and utilize for a patient population in this office, which is pretty awesome. Another really valuable thing that I'd like to do with my restorative dental hygiene credentials is be able to implement them to people that really need treatment. We're always offering solutions to problems for our patients, and sometimes I'd like to be able to offer more than what I'm currently able to offer, which is scaling, reclaiming, and laser therapy. And there's a lot that I currently do, but I wanna do a little bit more. I've read some really good research papers that have told us that now that we have a greater aging population, there's going to be a significant need for restorative dental hygienists. The Canadian population is aging quite rapidly, and that means that restorative procedures are going to be significantly increased. Shouts to my friend Tina, who is a restorative dental hygienist, runs a mobile clinic, and now goes into senior retirement homes and is able to provide treatment to that aging population, which I, I think she's amazing for doing. I don't know if I can do it, but I, I could try and see and let you know. So dental hygienists work in a host of settings to deliver clinical excellence and working under a variety of, of supervisions. So when a restorative dental hygienist works with a dentist side by side, Dentist begins the procedure and the restorative hygienist completes the procedure. So within our scope of practice, we can kind of do a lot of things, except we cannot carve a tooth, 
or alter the enamel permanently. The restorations and services provided by a restorative dental hygienist may include some of the following. Applying the cavity liner, face liner, place and car restorations, like fillings, like composite resins, and amalgams that nobody uses anymore. Fabricate temporary crowns. Those are all reasons why I decided to become a restorative dental hygienist. Stay tuned for my next video, which will talk about my application process. And make sure to subscribe and follow along on my journey. Until next time, peace out, peace.